The key for successful development over the next 30 years will be to try to find the right balance between the role of the state and the role of the market. It entails trying to make sure that the state performs its role better, to try to reduce the scope for government failure, but also that the market performs its role better. The markets have not done very well. Uh, the markets caused enormous devastation in 2008, from which many countries have not really recovered. What we've learned about the role of the state over the last 30 years uh, is actually quite a bit. We've had a lot of experiences, a lot of dramatic events, successes beyond what anybody had ever thought. Successes in East Asia show growth rates that had never, never occurred before and reductions in poverty that were beyond anything imaginable. And we also saw big failures. What we learned is that the successes required a large role of the state. In fact, most of the successes in East Asia, something called the developmental state, played a central role. The failures, too, were a result of countries following the Washington Consensus policies, which entailed stripping away the state rather than reinventing the state. These were the countries in transition from communism to a market economy. These were the ex-colonies in Africa as they got their independence. The policies that were pushed by the official institutions, World Bank and IMF, entailed a very limited role of the state. But that meant they couldn't develop the capacities to play the role that was absolutely essential for successful development or successful transition in the case of the former Soviet Union. But there's another important set of ideas, which is there's a big discussion today everywhere in governance. That was not part of the development agenda 30 years ago. Today, it is. We now understand that markets on their own are neither efficient nor stable, and there needs to be a set of regulations. But in fact, markets don't exist in a vacuum. Rather than saying the role of the market versus the state, I would say the role of the market and the state together, the state and the market are just two of the institutions that make our society and our economy function. They're civil society, they're cooperatives, they're nonprofit institutions, and we often give short shrift to these other institutions. So that is another lesson that we've learned from the past and will be important for the next 30 years. The role of the honest economist is to try to lay out what we know and what we don't know. And there are a lot of things we don't know and there are some things that we do know we have lots of experiments, and some of them are failures, and some of the successes to try to relate that. There's some systematic patterns. Interpreting history is always going to be difficult. There are some cases of trade-offs, some cases of complementarities. For a very long time, economists said you could only get more equality at the expense of economic growth, and we now realize that that view was wrong. We should have been more modest when we said that, and we need to be modest when we say currently the evidence is very strong that at the extremes of inequality that we are observing in the United States and some Western countries and the way that inequality is generated, we could have more equality and more economic growth. So that's the role of the economists is to try to give modestly and with some degree of humility what the best evidence is on our understanding of these very complex social, economic, and political phenomena.